I was always trying to learn. I was always trying to figure out what I was doing wrong and what mistakes I was making. Because if you don't do that, then that you're going to get passed by and other people are going to figure some new way of doing it and you're going to be left in the dark. You can get defined easily by other people's perceptions of you. My whole life I was convinced, when I was a young man, I was convinced I was a loser. Absolutely convinced. Until I started getting really good at martial arts, I never thought I was good at anything. I just had a, a very low self-esteem. And I was limiting myself by what I thought were other people's opinions of me. In the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances, that you don't have to go through life being a victim. But I think that you, you absolutely can be limited by your perceptions of someone's definitions of you. But you can break through that stuff. That's where you break through with discipline. That's where you break through with hard work and concentration and focus. And that's why it's so important to have like either a discipline or an art or something that you're trying to create or something that you're really focusing on. Because if you don't have like a point of focus as a human, I think it's very hard to get through this life and have an appreciation for, for true struggle. Because our physical struggle with what our bodies are designed for, the caveman of 10,000 plus years ago, our bodies are still designed for that. That physical struggle doesn't really manifest itself when you're sitting in front of a cubicle, you know, in front of a computer in a cubicle in this unnatural position all day. I think the whole situation is very confusing for the human body. And we don't get the tests that we need in order to have what you would call personal sovereignty. So you gotta impose those tests on yourself. I don't believe in faking it until you make it. Because you know what entrepreneurism is, right? It's the greatest self-discovery process in the history of mankind. And you learn more about yourself, what you don't know, your resiliency, how tough you are, what your weaknesses are by being an entrepreneur. It's probably the greatest self-discovery program in the history of the world. It's also this. It's the greatest self-improvement program with the highest compensation package possibly attached to it, too. That's what entre entrepreneurism is, a self-improvement program with massive compensation package attached to it. And that's why too many of you are too focused on growing your company and not focused enough on growing you. Because your company will never, ever exceed your identity or your vision for it. you got to grow you, because what will happen when it starts to grow, you'll start making unconscious mistakes to shrink it, making bad calls, getting weak, getting lazy, making mistakes. You're all nodding because you've all done it, because at some point your business got ahead of you. It will never exceed your identity and your vision. Because if the company catches your vision, if the company catches your identity, you're dying. As Jack indicated, I was born in Miami, Florida, in an area called Liberty City, in an abandoned building on a hard Nanolian floor with my twin brother. We were six weeks of age, we were adopted. When I was in fifth grade, I was identified as EMR, labeled, educable, mentally retarded put back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade and stayed in that category until I got out of high school. I don't have any college training, but I met a high school teacher who one day changed my life. I was waiting on another student and when he came in, he said to me, young man, go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And I said, I, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, it doesn't matter, follow my directions now. I said, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, because I'm educable, mentally retarded. And he came from behind his desk and he looked at me. He said, don't ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Act as if you already had the goal that you desire. So let us say, for example, you want to be financially independent. You want to be financially successful. How would you behave if you were financially successful? How would you dress? How would you organize your life? How would you treat other people? Sometimes I say, imagine that you are financially independent. You're independently wealthy. And you're only doing your current job as a courtesy to your boss, 
and to keep yourself busy during the day. But basically, you're an extremely wealthy person. You've inherited an enormous amount of money from some source. How would you behave if you were already the wealthy person that you desire to be? Many people don't realize that if you, if you behave like a poor person, there's an old saying that poor people, poor folks have poor ways. If you behave like a poor person, you'll always be poor. If you dress like a bum, if you have a, a, a messy uh, home or apartment, if your car is dirty um, with junk in the back seat, that's how poor people live. And what happens is you're surrounding yourself with the image of being poor. And you cannot change your outer world until you change your inner world. I remember recently I got to introduce two of my modern day superheroes. It was Richard Branson and Stan Lee. Yeah, the, the co-creator of Spider-Man and X-Men and Avengers and Fantastic Four. And we're going to dinner. I, I remember asking Stan, I was like, I have to know, you, you've created all these incredible superheroes. Who's your favorite? And he looks at me without a blink. He's like, Iron Man. I'm like, that's awesome. And then he's like, Jim, who's your favorite superhero? And he had this uh, Spider-Man tie. So I was like, Spider-Man. And without a pause, he says, with great power comes... And how do we all know that, right? It's like in our DNA, right? So we're going on this superhero's journey together here at A-Fest, and I'm thinking about it. I'm like, and I grew up with these challenges, and I had, you know, dyslexia, and I, have, I flip things around in my mind, and part of my issues um, growing up, and I flipped it in my mind. I was like, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. When you're in a position of power, you have great responsibility to wield that power well. And the opposite is also true. With great responsibility comes great power. Right? When, when you take responsibility for something, you have great power to what? To change things, to transform things, to make things better. When I said responsibility, you know, with great responsibility comes great power, the most important thing to be responsible for is how you feel. Does that make sense? And who controls how you feel? How many people are feeling pretty good right now? Yeah, and notice that these kind of things, it's, you know why? It, metaphorically, I look at you more like a thermostat than a thermometer. Is there a difference between a thermometer and a thermostat? Yes, yes or yes? yes? A thermometer does what? What does a thermometer do? What's the function? It yeah, it takes the temp it reflects and re it reacts to the environment. Is that true? It just reacts to the environment. And we are sometimes, you know, we're thermometers. We react to the weather, if we're honest, the economy, to politics. We react to how people treat us sometimes. But is there a gap between how something, someone stimulates us and how we respond? Do we have choice? Yes or yes? The difference between a thermometer and a thermostat, though, is a, thermo a thermometer reacts to the environment. What does the thermostat do, though? Yeah, it regulates, right? It helps manage. It sets a standard or a vision or a goal. And then what happens to the environment? It raises to be able to do that. Is there a difference? Yes or yes? And so that's where we're going back to responsibility. When we're talking about being responsible, the ability to be able to respond is how you feel about things and also how you focus on things. There are four levels of learning. Okay, let me tell you what the levels are. Some of you might know if you've been through any self-development, this is some very basic stuff, but it's important here. The first level is called being unconsciously incompetent. And what that means is this, when you first start doing something, you know so little about it, you basically know nothing. You don't know what you don't know. This is a very scary spot to be in. When you're thrown into a situation and you're a complete novice, you say, geez, I'd love to get better at this, but I haven't the slightest idea what I don't know. Everyone follow that concept? This is where most people start off, okay? The next level is becoming consciously incompetent. That means that you're like, Jesus Christ, I don't know anything. You're like, I, there's this, there's that, there's that, there's all these strategies, they all sound great, I don't know them. That's the next level. Next level above that is called being consciously competent. Consciously competent means that you're good at something, but you can't really do it with your eyes closed yet. You're good, but it requires all your focus and your mental energy. Like, remember when we were kids growing up, you learned to tie your shoe. In the beginning, you're like, tie your shoe, like, you're putting your things across and, and someone says, excuse me, like, don't, don't, don't interrupt me. You can't tie your shoe and have a conversation at the same time, right? That's when you're consciously competent in this thing. It requires all your conscious focus. The next level above that is called being 
unconscious competence. And that means when you're really, really great at something, you can do it without thinking about it. And the only way to get from conscious competence to unconscious competence is through practice. There's no other way. By drilling it into your head again and again and again and again and again until your brain just clicks and all of a sudden you're using the unconscious part of your mind, which is infinitely more powerful than your conscious mind.